What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Sports Muse podcast. We are on day 30 of 32 teams in 32 days. We are finally coming to an end. Uh, we are on the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, guys, before we jump to it, I want to thank you guys so much, man. Uh, we just surpassed 1,700 subscribers. I appreciate you guys for showing some love. Um, you know, to those people that keep coming back and keep watching the content, thank you guys so much. Those of you that haven't subscribed, you know, maybe I'll convince you in this video to, to click that like and subscribe button. So if you are not familiar with my previews, here's how it kind of goes is I talk about additions and re-signings. I talk about, you know, strengths, weaknesses, departures, draft picks. Uh, we kind of talk about what this team's going to do this season and what's kind of, you know, in the future, you know, what, what's this team going to look like in three to five years. Um, so those are some of the things that we like to do in the preview. Last year in 2020, uh, San Francisco just had some really bad luck, man. A lot of key guys go down with injuries. Uh, they just could not get straight last season. So they end up going six and 10. Uh, but maybe that works out in their favor for this coming season because they go out and they get their franchise guy, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, so we'll see how that all plays out. As far as additions and re-signings for this season, they bring back Kyle Juszczyk, Mohamed Sanu, Trent Williams, Alex Mack, Arden Key, Maurice Hurst, Emmanuel Mosley, Jason Verrett, Kaywan Williams, uh, Tony Jefferson, and Jaquise Tart. Um, I like it, man. I, I like some of these guys. You know, I like taking the flyer out like a Jason Verrett. Um, I think he's been a pretty talented guy in this league when he's healthy. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit more uh, later. But, uh, you know, I, I like that. Um, I like some of the re-signings. I like bringing in a guy like an Alex Mack, who um, I think has been underrated for a minute now. Uh, he's been one of the best centers. Trent Williams, you know, they signed him to the huge contract, but he is a big-time player. Um, Kyle's, Kyle Juszczyk, I mean, is kind of the last of a dying breed, um, big time fullback. So I like it. I like as far as the, the re-signings and additions go. As far as departures are concerned, they lose Tevin Coleman, Jarek McKinnon, Kendrick Bourne, Marquise Goodwin, Jordan Reed, Ben Garland, Ezekiel Ansaw, uh, Solomon Thomas, Richard Sherman, and Kilo Witherspoon. Um, you know, of course, you know, you lose two pretty big time corners. Um, and again, that's my kind of only concern with this team. And we'll talk about it as far as weaknesses. Um, but you know, Solomon Thomas, um, has underperformed considering, you know, his draft position, but, uh, I, I do think that's a little bit of a loss. Jordan Reed stepped up when we saw Kittle banged up last year, um, but we know his lengthy, you know, concussion history. Um, they lose two running backs, but this team, you know, we've seen this with Kyle Shannon's dad, um, you know, you just pl plug and play in that zone, that outside zone scheme um, as far as running backs and they go and get Trey Sermon. Um, so I, I think they'll be fine as far as losing those two running backs in the draft. I told you they got their franchise guy. They trade up and they get Trey Lance. And that is a guy I, absolutely love man uh i've been pounding the table on trey lance for over a year now you know i think this guy's big time um and, and i don't think he's as big of a project as what people thought um i think people are starting to come around he, he's kind of showing out in camp a little bit and like i said i've been saying this for a while now man that this guy's smart um i think he brings like some of the best qualities of, of a cam newton and leaves out the bad ones. Uh, Cam Newton's always been a, a big, strong runner. Um, I think he's faster than a Cam Newton. Of course, he's not as big. Cam Newton's an absolute monster of a man. Uh, but I think he brings that element. Um, but I also think he throws the ball way better than Cam Newton's ever thrown the ball. And, and we're talking about an MVP. Um, so, you know, I think he has a, a bigger arm. You know, it's not quite, you know, a Josh Allen-esque arm. Uh, but he's big time, man. And this guy's so smart. We, we heard about in the, the process of how smart he was on the whiteboard as far as drawing up defenses and how to, you know, decipher what the defense is trying to do to him and how to beat them. Um, so I love Trey Lance. I think this is a fantastic pick. Um, they go out and get Aaron Banks, you know, the, the big Notre Dame offensive lineman. Um, I like that because, you know, with this system, you know, you need to protect the franchise quarterback. Uh, they like to get downhill and run that ball. So um, I like that. They go out and get Trey Sermon, which I thought was fantastic value. Um, you know, he's a guy who might be day one starter, man. And uh, we saw what this guy did at Ohio State. Um, I, I love it as far as, you know, even I don't 
a lot of times there's not a bell cow back there. Um, but I think he's a guy that can eat, you know, 15, 20 touches on uh, him and uh, most are not. So I, I really like that. And they get Ombre Thomas, uh, the corner from Michigan. It's going to help with that depth. Um, you know, if he develops a little bit earlier, he might see playing time a little bit earlier than we kind of expect. Um, so I do like this draft, um, in the 2021 draft. Um, I think they got some big time guys that can contribute now and into the future. As far as team strengths, um, I think they're so solid across the board, man. Uh, a lot of consistent big time playmakers, you know, on, on offense, you have a Debo Samuel who was banged up a lot last season. A lot of the Niners were banged up last season, but, uh, you know, we saw what he did his rookie season, Brandon Ayuk, uh, he's kind of like a, a, a Debo Samuel in a way. Um, so I like kind of having those guys that just, they, they make the job easy on a young quarterback, or even if it's Jimmy G starting early, they, they just make his job easy. They can catch a, a five yard drag and rip it for 25. Um, because they're so good after the catch George Kittle. I mean, you can argue he's the best tight end in the league. You know, I know a lot of people say Travis Kelsey. I'm fine. If anybody says George Kittle's the best tight end in the league, uh, he's so diverse in what he can do. And the dude just brings attitude. You know, the, the guy loves playing the game. Um, so, you know, he's definitely a fan favorite. Um, you know, like I said, with backs, you have Raheem Mostert, you have, uh, you know, Trey Sermon, uh, you have a big, strong offensive line, uh, the, the defense, man, that front four can put pressure on you, which takes so much pressure off that back end. Uh, you know, Fred Warner might be the, you know, you can argue he's the best off ball linebacker in the league. Um, the dude can cover anybody. I mean, I'm not going to, just talking about tight ends and running backs, he can cover a slot. I mean, this guy's a freak of an athlete. So, you know, this team is so solid across the board. Uh, there's a lot to really love about this 49ers team. As far as weakness, um, you know, you're, you're nitpicking a little bit, but uh, I, I don't love their corner situation. Um, you know, they, they lost, you know, Witherspoon, they lost Sherman. Um, it's the only spot on the team that I don't think has a lot of talent or really, really good upside. Um, I like Verrett, but like I said, you know, he, he's missed a lot of games in his career. Um, if he stays healthy, I think he can help, and I think he can be a solid starter. He's not going to, you know, he's not going to be Jalen Ramsey, uh, but I, I think he can play, you know, big-time snaps. Uh, I think he can, you know, play within the scheme. Um, I know Richard Sherman's had some off the field issues, um, which is, you know, he, he's been a guy who's been pretty loud in this league, um, but I don't think he's been a guy who's been in a lot of trouble. Um, I don't know what's going on. I don't know the full story. And, you know, as far as when it's those big time profile cases, um, you only hear half the story anyway. So if, you know, that, that stuff clears up, um, I think, you know, re-signing Richard Sherman, who's still a free agent would be a big time get for this team um, and would really just definitely sure up their, their only kind of weakness as far as this team's concerned. As far as biggest question marks for this team, um, I think it definitely falls on Trey Lance and it's, it's how soon will we see Trey Lance and, you know, what do we see from Trey Lance when we see him? Um, you know, what level would he take this offense to? Uh, what we saw with Kyle, uh, yeah, Kyle Shanahan did with Washington with RG3 I mean, you have to love the prospect of seeing Trey Lance early. Um, you know, RG3 goes in and wins rookie of the year. Um, they really change a lot of the things that we felt in the NFL. Uh, we never thought we would see, um, you know, read options, speed options. And, and RG3 brought a lot of stuff to that to the table. I think Trey Lance is better than RG3. And I know it's easy to look in hindsight and say, all right, RG3's career wasn't very good. I mean, again, you're talking about a guy who won rookie of the year over Andrew Luck. Um, you know, I think at the same point in their career, uh, you know, rookie seasons, I still take Trey Lance. Uh, I think he throws the ball a lot better. Um, I think he's a bigger runner. I think he's a stronger runner. He's not as fast as RG3. Um, but, you know, I think he'll be ready sooner rather than later. And I, like I said, Kyle Shanahan is a mastermind. Um, you know, the, the, the idea that, you know, he's licking his chops, uh, you know, thinking of all the things that he can do with Trey Lance. Um, so it's going to be interesting, you know, what's he going to look like throwing the ball against like the Rams, um, you know, with a top tier corner and, and the best, you know, pass rusher in the league, Aaron Donald, um, that stuff's going to be interesting of what we see, uh, you know, pressure situations. You can't replicate that kind of stuff, you know, especially playing at North Dakota state, you know, he hasn't played a lot of high pressure games, you know, he hasn't played a lot of games at quarterback. So, you know, if it's week 15 division on the line, home field advantage, um, if it's the playoffs, you know, what's that stuff going to look like? Um, you know, I, there's no answer, you know, people can give you a prediction, but there's really no answer for it. You just gotta, gotta see it and, you know, 
roll with it. As far as record prediction for the 2021 San Francisco 49ers, um, you know, this is kind of one where, like I said, there's there's a few questions. There's a lot of knowns. Um, the only thing, like, I feel like if this team were in, you know, the NFC, North, South, East, uh, you know, 14 wins would be possible. Uh, this this roster is very, very talented. Um, but the West, the NFC West is the hardest division of football. Uh, them and the AFC North are just, it's tough, man. It's tough to get wins inside that division. Um, so I'm saying 12 and five. Um, I think it's going to be a dog fight uh, with them and the, the Rams until uh, the end of the season. It's going to be really razor thin of who wins this division. Um, I think this team, you could, see four playoff teams out of this division um i'd be surprised if you didn't see three uh, i'd be pretty surprised if the seahawks didn't make it you know the, the cardinals have a little bit of an uphill uphill battle uh, but i think you know they can definitely make it um if a few things fall right so 12 and 5 um i think they win this division um i'm not betting on it you know i'm not betting on anything in this division it's just too too close too many you know big time teams no easy wins um so it's going to be interesting but yeah like i said 12 and 5 as far as bold predictions um i told you i love trey lance man and i think trey lance you know generally speaking proves to be big time um i think he proves to be big time this year um i think he's a guy when the season's all said and done no matter how it ends you go yeah that's our guy the, the NFL's in trouble with, with, with Trey Lance and Kyle Shanahan, they're in trouble. Um, I think if we see Trey Lance before week four, he wins rookie of the year over Trevor Lawrence, uh, much of like, you know, Trevor Lawrence was a big time name. The last time we saw a guy like this big of a name was Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck won rookie of the year. Nope. RG three did. I think Trey Lance takes it from him too, but Trey Lance has a better career post uh, rookie year than RG three. So that's my bold prediction. If we see Trey Lance before week four, he wins offensive rookie of the year. Guys, if you stuck around this far, do you like the video? Please click like and subscribe, man. It's the only way we can grow. Like I said, we just hit 1,700 subscribers. I appreciate you guys showing love, man. You know, drop a comment. What do you guys think? You know, do you agree with me? Do you disagree? Um, I'd love to hear from you guys, man. You know, do you think the cornerback spot's a little bit, you know, stronger than what I see on paper, what I saw last year on film? Um, so, just, you know, just drop the comments. Let me know. And uh, like I said, I really do appreciate you guys. And I will. See you next time. Hey, guys, thank you so much for sticking around for the entire video. Uh, thank you for supporting the show, clicking that like button, subscribing, comments, all that fun stuff. If you could just take one more second and check out Rep Sports, uh, check out Raise Energy. Um, they are partnered with this podcast. They are help supporting me. So if you go and check them out, um, it's the best tasting energy drink on the market. 100% guaranteed. Um, they have supplements, protein, pre-workouts, recovery, um, all that stuff. If you guys check them out and you use promo code SportsMuse when checking out, you get 15% off of your order. And who doesn't like, you know, some money off of their purchase? Yeah, you know, that's awesome. Uh, so definitely check them out. And like I said, you know, it helps support me. It helps support them. So please check them out, guys. And thank you again so much for sticking around.